You know, I have read everything, and I mean everything. <laughs> Maybe not everything. Okay, I've read a lot. I've read a lot about prayer. You know, all the great classics, Bounds and Murray and, you know, all these different venues and, you know, the classics from Christianity and read the scriptures and I've even studied, you know, with the rabbis and I've got my my Tehillah Shem, you know, and I've got my Siddurs, you know, and I've got all my junk. And you know what? <laughs> and I, oh, by the way, you know, I've studied with the Catholics, so I know what a rosary is and a scapula and all the other things, you know, that goes along with all the, you know, the Latin and the Greek and the Hebrew and the, you know, do this and do that. And you name it, you know. Personally, I think the Spanish, you know, have more of a hang on the Catholics than the Italians do. But anyways, that's just me. But the point being is that, you know, I really, don't get it. I get the idea that, you know, you should pray. I get the idea that you could have structured prayer, which is true, you can. You know, I mean, God knows, Jews pray for three hours sometimes, you know, and I've been there, you know, been to synagogue and we thought it, you know. We dive to the left, and then we dive to the right, and then we step back, you know, and then we do this, do this, and then we step forward, you know, and do that, and then we step back, you know, and do that, and then we go over here, you know, and we go, yeah, you know, and then we come over here and go, yeah, yeah, you know, and then we go, oh, yeah, okay, you know, and then we go down a little bit, you know, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, ah, wait, you know, or we could tie it on, you know, and bind it to us, you know, and really get serious. You think that's serious? Huh. But all this prayer, I mean, you know, I think I accomplished more when I was out screaming in a parking lot at God than I did with most of the prayers that I've done. You know, I remember being in like, you know, the men's prayer watch at Calvary and doing, you know, the intercessory prayer thing, you know. It was powerful. It worked. You know, God spoke. God did. God answered. I remember going to Pentecostal churches, you know, and praying this way and praying that way, but I didn't roll around, so maybe I didn't find what they were looking for. But I remember it was powerful, you know. Cool. I remember praying, you know, in Catholic Church, you know, and, you know, doing that, and, you know, and, you know, and kind of, hmm. oh, well, you know, but it was powerful, you know, for me, and uh, maybe not anybody else, and I remember lighting candles, you know, kind of like, ooh, look at the steeple with all the people, you know, it's cathedrals, and uh, I kind of got blessed, you know, I mean, I, I was blessed, I mean, I was kind of like, just, you know, there, you know, and I think everybody was blessed, but, you know, I don't think God really cares about prayers as much as he cares about conversation, you know, communication with you and him. Because I read Murray and I read Spurgeon, I read all these guys, you know, and sure, it's there's a time and a place for structure and setting yourself certain maybe lists to pray for people. God, please save them. I've been praying for 37 years for that sucker and you still haven't saved him. Please. And God says, you know, hey, you keep bugging me and I will do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You know, that's not me. I pray once and it's done. Over with. If God can't do it, forget it. <laughs> Man, I've committed it to him. My faith is wrapped up on that one. It's like, hey, once isn't enough, you know. And if I have to read one, because I read it, it's there. <laughs> I figured God knew I was going to read it, so guess what? I prayed it. <laughs> now, you may not have that kind of relationship. <laughs> but for me, you know, I've done the, you know, typical you know, praying when you should, you know, and praying when you could, and praying with people, and giving the long-winded, you know, yes, you stand up in church, and now let's open our bulletins, and let's pray for the service, you know, and we'll pray for the pastor, and we'll pray that the Holy Spirit will do this, and we'll pray that God will do that, and we'll pray that Jesus will be this, and we'll pray that the people will be that, and we pray for the Spirit to go and do and be and all accomplish. But, you know, If it ain't two-way, it seems like such a waste of way to go, you know? I mean, I'm kind of weird that way, you know? I read things, you know, even Tozer today. You know, I read Tozer and I kind of went... <laughs> you know, and I guess Tozer made me feel better because the one line I got out of it was very important for me and maybe it'll be important for you. Because this is what I think, you know, and you can maybe take it different because if you're a Catholic, you, you, you should go pray like Catholics. 
know, if you're Protestant, go pray like Protestants. If you're a Jew, you know, God help you. <laughs> pray like a Jew. Pray like Islam. Pray whatever, you know. I don't care. God doesn't really, you know. Tebow it. Oh, Atlas. Oh. You know, I mean, come on. Now, after all this stupid Tebow stuff, they're arguing about who owns the rights to it. Please, what are they going to argue about next? John 3.16, who owns that? They've already fought about who owns the rights to the Bibles that have been translated. Thank God they didn't copyright the King James. <laughs> we wouldn't have a Bible today, or I wouldn't use one, because guess what? Most of the reasons why I use a King James is because it's not copyrighted. It has nothing to do with accuracy. I don't care. God can speak to you anywhere. But I own all kinds of Bibles now, and I don't care. You want to sue me for copyright? Sue me for copyright. <laughs> God, I'll get you. But you know, in prayer, it's kind of like, I felt good about reading this in some ways because it was kind of like, you know, I, I'm learning, you know, and there are parts of me that still goes, nah, 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 until I get it, you know. And it's kind of like, you know, I, I, my wife tells me I have beautiful prayers. You know, people say you pray wonderfully. People say, oh, I felt the Spirit of God, you know. Yeah. <sighs> You know, I'm just like, you know, the Lord, you know, you already know, you know, do it, you know, you know, I mean, my personal life is my personal life, and I just live my life in prayer, I guess. I just talk to him wherever he's at, because I think he's with me and in me, and he already knows, and we're doing it, and we're kind of living it, and that's kind of what prayer is for me. But, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, or maybe I'm right. Generally, we only pray as well as we live. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Psalm 66:18. Prayer at its best is the expression of the total life. For our, for bleh, for all things else being equal, our prayers are only as powerful as our lives. In the long pole, we pray only as well as we live. I like to change that a little bit because, you know, it's kind of like it sounds like prayer is a power and a force. And in, in a way, you know, you know, we kind of don't got it all on that subject, you know, so just accept that. You really don't have it all when it comes to understanding what prayer is or prayer does or prayer or conversation, you know, kind of. Because prayer is a big subject and there's intercession and there's petition and there's this and that and the other thing and getting it all grounded and rounded and founded in the Word, you know, and you got to kind of do each part, you know. Should have called each one separately some other name, you know, which in the Hebrew they do. But anyways, we won't go there. But the point is, is that we're covering prayer in general, and that's what we're talking about in general. So we'll just generalize. But really, living your prayer is what I say we should do. You live your life as your prayer. You live it as you were like, hey God, you know, I need help. You know, and you just go on like normal conversation. You know, Lord. You know, bless the food that we're going to eat, you know. I mean, you don't have to keep making blessings rest us, you know, like Jewish do, you know. And blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us bread from the earth. Blessed art thou, Lord, our King of the universe, who has given us an oven to cook the bread in. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us electricity for the oven to cook the bread in. Blessed art thou, Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us a dam to dam the river, who gave us the river, who gave us the flood, who gave us the water, who gave us the breath, who gave us the life, who gave us this and that and the other thing, so that we could connect them all together and make them into the bread they gave from the earth. Blessed are thou, Lord, I got King of yours. You get it? <laughs> okay. So, you don't got to go to that extreme. You know, I think God knows, you know. And I'm not trying to play down God as holy. I'm trying to make Him holier, you know. I think God knows and we don't. And so we need to go with what we know rather than what we don't know. And so, I don't know about you, but, you know, I'm really not into the formal thing, you know. Kind of more like, you know, in case you hadn't gathered, informal seems to me that God hears me and I have a high priest taking my prayers anyways. So, hey, Jesus, could you kind of like put in a good word? <laughs> if I were a rich man. Oh God, you know, if I were a rich man. <laughs> you know, I mean, two of you seems to be make more sense to me about prayer than really most of what I read about and talk about and even teach about sometimes when I have to teach, you know, in a certain way. For people that really want to get into that kind of way, you know, and in certain circumstances, yes, I get it, you know, the Father, you know, in heaven, and hallowed be thy name, and, you know, most people haven't a clue what hallowed is, so, you know, let's hallow it now, because <laughs> it's all hallowed these, but, you know, we're not going to go to Halloween, because it's the same hallowed, but we're not going to say that, so, you know, okay, sort of. <laughs> so you get it. Some prayers are like fire escape, used only in times of critical emergency, never very enjoyable. 
but used as a way of terrified escape from disaster. God, help me. <laughs> Deliver me, O oh Lord, according to thy loving kindness. Yeah. They do not represent the regular life of one of those who offers them. Rather, they are the unusual and uncommon acts of a spiritual amateur. Ooh, <laughs> slap me again. <laughs> They may be the spiritual, the uncommon acts of a spiritual amateur, but they're probably the most powerful prayers that most people offer because most people don't have a continuing, ongoing relationship where they speak to God regularly, you know, and talk to Him like we're talking now. You know, you and I, Him and I, you to me, and me and Him, and Him and you, and you and Him, and we're together, you know, and as much as I'm speaking to brethren, so I've done it unto you, so if I'm speaking to you, then I've done it to Him because He's in me, and He's in you, and so because I'm talking to you, I'm talking to him, and because you're in him and he's in me, then you're talking to me and you're watching me, so that way you see and, you know, done to him as you've done to me. You got that? <laughs> if you did, you'd change your whole Christianity. Because <laughs> you wouldn't treat anybody bad anymore. Because <laughs> if Jesus is in them and you treated them bad, oh boy, did you blow it, because you did it to the Lord. <laughs> you're busted. <laughs> oh, well. But you see, that's kind of how I get it, you know? If I'm talking to Joe, you know, then if Joe's got Jesus inside, then guess what? I'm kind of like praying because I'm talking to Joe and Jesus. I used to know people who used to walk up and say, Hi, Jesus and Michael. How you doing? Are you taking care of Michael? Oh, good. <laughs> I, you know, kind of went, hmm. You know, I'd walk away going, hmm. He made a point, you know, and I think about it for, and I still think about it. I kind of go, hmm, huh? You know, what do you say to that? Cool. <laughs> it always dumbfounded me when I met a spiritually wise Christian that was so universally not of this world that I was like, huh. <laughs> you know, they were like, not living in this planet, which was cool, because in reality, we really shouldn't be. We should be that weird. But, you know, most people want to be, you know, kind of like sedate, you know, calm, and, you know, have their guns and toys and boys and play with them too, you know, and eat their cake and do what they do. But, unfortunately, God's kind of like ending the world scene, and it's kind of like we don't have a lot of time left, so it's kind of like you need to get it together and get it right so you get on with it, you know, because otherwise you're just playing games with God and you're not really getting much out of it. Most of us in moments of stress have wished that we had lived so that the prayer would not be so unnatural to us and have regretted that we had not cultivated prayer to the point where it would be as easy and as natural as breathing. <sighs> now, I like that. If I could think of prayer as natural as breathing, when I breathe in, let the Holy Spirit come in. And when I breathe out, let all my sins go out. I like that. You know, when I breathe in, let the Spirit come in. And when I breathe out, let my sins go out. I like that. When did I invent that? Just now. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> hey. When a fact's a fact, it's a fact, Jack. <laughs> so breathe in. Breathe out. Talk to God about what you want to get done, because we're all in the sun, you know. Son of God, sun, sun, you know, get it? <laughs> rays of sunshine, getting a tan, catching a rays. Ooh, cool. But, having said all that, there are people that want to get holy. Smokes. And uh, kind of make it bigger, you know, and more kind of like really, 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 really. But, okay. To pray effectively is required of us that there be no unblessed areas in our lives and no parts of the mind or soul that are not inhabited by the Spirit. No impure desires allowed to live within us. No disparity between our prayers and our conduct. You're busted. <laughs> I don't know about you, but... Uh, oops! Maybe... We aren't quite there yet. Maybe that's why I'm still working on this prayer thing. 
How about you? You working on this prayer thing to make it as easy as breathing in the spirit and breathing out your sin? <sighs> well, maybe we need to start. God, just as easy as it is breathing, could you start being believing in each one of us so that we don't have to, you know, make it such a weird thing and such a bizarre thing and get it all carried away? but that we could live each day as though we were in you and we could just talk to you and hear from you and live as though you were alive and well and inside of us as we move and live and have our being with you. Because you know, God, I kind of like that idea for my friends over here and I kind of like that idea for me. And I kind of like that idea that you're sitting over there and talking to me because that's kind of what I think of as prayer. Maybe that's the way we should treat it. Kind of like, Jesus over there Ooh. I think I gotta go I need to go talk to him okay. <laughs>